Hey there, welcome to the channel. Greetings from Ko Samui. If you've been following the news recently, you will know that there's a new AI startup emerging out of China called DeepSeek, which is taking the US stock market by storm. Recently, about two days ago, NVIDIA lost over $500 billion in market cap in a single day because of this new DeepSeek. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to run it locally on your machine, so that it's not sending data back and forth to Chinese servers. You can just run it on your machine using Olama. This is Olama, which is a piece of software that you can download. You can download it to Windows or Mac or Linux, and then you can install this on your machine and basically just download DeepSeek. The issue with this being that the language models are very large. So the, the biggest one, 671 billion characters is 400 gigabytes. So unless you have a lot of hard drive space on your laptop or desktop, it's going to take a very long time to download. So luckily there's a better way to do this, but first I wanna show you how to use Olama. And they've got different sized language models. So you can start with the 1.5B that's one gig, and then also 7B, that's 4.7 gig, all the way up to the top of the line, 671 billion for 400 gigs. But I would recommend just starting with the 1.5B, and it will show you exactly how to do it. So once you've downloaded Olama, all you have to do is run this command in the terminal, and then it will start running. Now, I've already tested DeepSeek on the, I think the 7 billion model, and Honestly, I wasn't all that impressed. I asked it some very simple questions. It did its reasoning in real time, and it just took a very long time. And I would say right now, currently, it's not a real serious competitor to ChatGPT. That's just my opinion. But only time will tell. This is the official website for DeepSeek, and they were having some malicious attacks a couple days ago, I'm not exactly sure what was going on. I haven't actually signed up for DeepSeek officially yet because I think now you need to have a Chinese phone number or at least you used to have to need a Chinese phone number. Now it looks like anybody can sign up for it. But luckily there's a better way to go about this so that you're not sending data back and forth to <laughs> China. Ah, uh, it's trying to open a, trying to send them an email. That's not what I wanna do. So you can create an account on DeepSeek right here if you don't worry about your data privacy and, and these sorts of things or you can install it locally using olama and then you just simply run this command with the size of the model here at the end you can test it locally within the terminal but like i say the downside of using this is it takes up a lot of hard drive space um, so i would recommend just coming over to a tool called perplexity and they already have DeepSeek R1 built into it. So as you can see here, let me zoom in a little bit. DeepSeek R1 now available in Pro Search and hosted in the US. So you could just run it on Perplexity. All you have to do is create your account, which is completely free to get started. And then you can uh, just turn on Pro right here. So if you switch on Pro, it will show you reasoning with R1, DeepSeek model hosted in the US or you can obviously use OpenAI as well, the O1 model, but that's free. And then they also have the $20 per month plan as well for basically ChatGPT plus. So you can do that too. But for now, I'm just going to select reasoning with R1. It already corrected it. And now it's going to do all of the reasoning in real time, right in front of your eyes. So it basically just has to go through its reasoning and then it will come up with the answer for you. The sky appeared blue due to a phenomenon called Rayleigh scattering, where shorter wavelengths of light, blue and violet, are scattered more efficiently by molecules in Earth's atmosphere than longer wavelengths. Here's a breakdown of the science, right? So it goes down through the entire thing and it also cites its sources as well. So you can pull up any articles you want over here and look at related articles. You can ask it another question. It will come up with an answer in real time. This is one thing that I like about DeepSeek versus ChatGPT is that it does all of its reasoning in front of you. And now let's see what it comes up with because this is something that would normally be censored in China. And it's looking through its database here, searching for information about Tiananmen Square, 
will be interesting to see what the output is. Is it censored or not? That's what I want to determine here. Because if I ask this with ChatGPT, it will spit out the correct response immediately. But we'll see what come, what DeepSeek says. So Tiananmen Square is a vast square in central Beijing, China, spanning 215,000 square meters. Who cares, really? Named after the Tiananmen that separates it from the Forbidden City. Um, tell me about the controversy surrounding Tiananmen Square. Tiananmen Square protests of 1989 remain one of the most significant and sensitive political events in modern Chinese history. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. The demonstrations began in 1989 as student-led pro-democracy protests, eventually growing to include about 1 million people gathering in Tiananmen Square. The protest voiced concerns about corruption, inflation, demands for greater political freedom and democratic reforms. All right, yeah, that's a pretty good response. Initially, the government took no direct action with party officials divided on how to respond. However, by late March uh, 1989, martial law was declared in Beijing. On the night of June 3rd to the 4th, the government deployed military forces to clear the square. Troops and tanks advanced towards Tiananmen Square, using force against protesters who attempted to block their way. So I'm sure you've probably seen the famous photo of the tank man standing in front of this huge tank rolling into Tiananmen Square. That's what I'm trying to get to the bottom of here. And so far... They seem to be answering the question fairly accurately without too much censorship, right? And who knows? Maybe it's because I'm using perplexity versus the official, you know, deep seek website over here. I don't really know. But to be honest, I don't really want to sign up for this one because I don't trust <laughs> China with my data all that much. Although I am a TikTok user, so I, I am using TikTok, which is also not so great. Well, let's continue reading here. The military action resulted in significant casualties. Okay, we're getting somewhere. While there has never been an official count, estimates range from several hundred to several thousand deaths with many more wounded. The troops faced resistance from Beijing residents, particularly in the Western neighborhoods of blah, 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 blah. Aftermath and legacy. The crackdown had profound consequences. Western countries imposed aims, arms embargoes on China. The government conducted mass arrests of protesters. Officials deemed sympathetic to the protests were removed from positions, and political reforms in the 1980s were halted. Strict control was imposed on media coverage of the events. Okay. The events remain heavily censored in China and continue to be one of the most sensitive topics in Chinese politics. The incident, known within China as the June 4th incident, has become a watershed moment that established limits on political expression that persists to the very day, this very day. Awesome. So, yeah, they actually did a really, really reasonable job of addressing the concerns about the Tiananmen Square, but they didn't actually cite the tank man, which is a little disappointing, right? So overall, I, I'm not really noticing too much censorship here. You would think since this is based in China, uh, they would have a lot of censorship imposed on some of these squirrely issues that they don't really want to talk about inside China. But overall, this is quite impressive. And um, as you can see, the responses are very, very fast. And even though I've hit my pro limit, it seems to continue generating more responses. Um, so yeah, and you can also upload files here as well if you want to, you know, read through a PDF or, you know, do any number of things using DeepSeek. You can do that here. So yeah, overall, I'm quite impressed by DeepSeek. Uh, I've run it on my machine too, like I said earlier, but it was fairly limited in terms of what it could do. But if you just use perplexity.ai, the nice thing about DeepSeek is that it's completely free and the developers built it on a budget of less than $6 million, allegedly. Uh, whereas OpenAI, it took billions and billions of dollars to build out their platform. So that's why a lot of people, you know, OpenAI, NVIDIA, uh, Oracle, these companies are running scared because they see that this can be done much, much cheaper with less hardware, so they're not even using the NVIDIA chips. Uh, should be interesting to see how this all plays out, but I just wanted to show you how to do this for free using Perplexity AI. And then obviously you can also install it locally on your machine as well. But why bother when you have Perplexity, which is completely free and it's running on US servers. So thanks so much for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Take care, signing off.